Welcome today as I share this word with you. And I just want to say a happy Father's Day to all the dads out there. I hope that you're having a wonderful time. I hope that today is going to be a really great Father's Day for you. You know, dads is so important. And I want to encourage all those dads that are out there taking care of their families that you keep on <clears throat> um, doing what you need to do. Uh, because God definitely honors that. You know, he really honors all that. Um, so today, uh, I just want to appreciate the dads, all the, the dads, the fathers that are doing what they need to do for their families to provide and to protect. Um, God bless you. Keep it up. You know, you are doing a fantastic job. You know, a lot of times society plays, downplays the roles of fathers, especially in the West in this country. But dads play a significant role in the lives of their children. Um, it is through them that they set the family lineage. You know, they set the pace. They set the tone for generations to come. So great jobs, Dad. And I want to just remind you that starting on Wednesday, we are going to be having our live Zoom Bible studies. Uh, and I encourage you to be part of it. Now, you have to register to be part of the Zoom meetings. Um, you know, one of the reasons for that is that during the Bible studies, I can dive into a lot more deeper things. During the Sunday services, I can go, but not as deep. So the, during our Zoom uh, Wednesdays Bible studies, I'm going to go a lot deeper than I do on a typical Sunday because it's going to give you a lot of clarity. It is going to show you a lot of things um, to you to understand. So make sure that you invite a friend and you join and you connect uh, the Zoom link is going to be at the definitely the bottom of this video, so make sure you're sharing with a friend. And it's going to be interactive, too. During the time, I want you to ask questions. You know, we can, it's going to be interactive, and I, I want to make sure that you get your questions answered. We're going to have times of prayer, times of deliverance, and so many great things. And to kick it off with the Zoom, we're going to be talking about prayer again, which is my message today. But I'm going to dive a little bit deeper because I think... Um, from the feedback that I've been getting from you guys, you want to learn more about deeper things about prayer. How do you get deeper in, in prayer? So we're going to be studying all that and the spiritual aspect of it and how prayer interact and, and you know, deal with our daily lives. So today, uh, I want to be brief before you, um, but let's just open up in prayer. Father, we just come to you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you for this day. Lord, I thank you for waking us up another morning. Lord, I bless you today. I pray that as I speak that you're going to speak through me, that the people are going to hear you speak. They're not going to hear me. Let your name be glorified and lifted up today. In Jesus' name, amen. So today I want to talk to you about seven keys to a stronger and a deeper prayer life. And I want to highlight a few things that you need to understand for those that want to have a deeper and more meaningful prayer life. You know, prayer is something that's so vital. Prayer is something that I'm sure you heard people talk about all the time. You got to pray. You got to pray, right? But I want to give you just some strategies, some key things that if you need to get deeper, you want to soak more. You want to get to another level in your prayer life. Now, these might just sound simple and basic, but if you can apply these things, you're going to see a tremendous change in your prayer life because prayer allows us to communicate. Prayer allows us to interact with the Lord. So one of the first things is that the first key is this. If you want a deeper and more meaningful prayer life, you need to develop a consistent prayer time or prayer schedule or prayer routine when you establish a regular time and place to pray without without distractions you can focus more now i know that sounds so simple but you need to make sure that during this time you dedicate a specific time just to pray a routine is something that you expect to do on a regular basis a routine is something that you expect to do, whether it's on a daily basis or a weekly or now you need to make sure you're praying every day and you schedule that time. Because when you're going through your prayer times, you don't need any distractions. You don't need anyone calling you, anyone messaging you, 
anyone, you know, trying to get you to do something else. And I know a lot of people struggle with that. You know, we just only pray sometimes when things get tough. Now, the, the challenge and the, the problem with praying only when things get tough is this. When you wait to only pray when things get rough, you're already behind. That means that you have not been paying attention like you should have. That goes for you. That goes for me. That goes for all of us. When you don't have a regular prayer routine, a regular prayer schedule, whether it's you pray at midnight. For me, my prayer schedule is usually midnight. Every day at midnight from 12 to 1 o'clock, I just spend time to pray. And that is what's been effective in my altar. When you wait until things get terribly bad in order for you to pray, you are already so far behind. That means that you have to play catch up. And one of the hardest things to do in the realms of the spirit is to play catch up. Because there's so many things that you got to go back and you got to fight again. So when you're not praying regularly, there are things that the enemy has deployed against your life, against your family, against your business, against your ministry, against your mind. So when you don't have a consistent prayer time routine, when the enemy comes, you will not be able to detect it and to fight against it. And also, if you don't have a regular prayer schedule, when God is leading you to do something or not to do something, because you're not regularly in the presence of the Lord, you're going to miss God when you don't have a dedicated time that you pray. When you have a dedicated time that you pray, you are seeking God at that specific time. And usually you need to have a specific time and a place. Now, I understand that all of us have busy, busy lives. But I always say this about being busy. The mere fact that you're busy doing something means that thing is important to you. Whatever is important to you, give your attention to. So I see a lot of people say stuff like, man, my day's so busy. I don't even have time to do anything that I want to do. I'm doing stuff because I have to do this. I got to run there. Whatever is important to you, you're going to dedicate time. So if prayer is important to you, you're going to make sure that you're carving out time to pray. Whether you pray in the morning or you pray in the afternoon or you pray in the evening. You want to be consistent whatever time that you decide to pray. You know, just as we nourish our bodies daily with consistent meals, our spirits need the consistent nourishment of prayer. Having a set prayer routine helps to cement prayer as a non-negotiable priority. You know, you eat on a regular basis, right? What would happen if you decide that, you know what, you're not going to eat for the next two months, what happened to you? Do you think you're going to you know, be alive? Probably not. What would happen if you just don't eat at all? Well, I want you to think about the same thing as prayer. You use natural food to nourish your, your flesh. You use natural food to give you energy. You use natural food. And most of the times, most people have a schedule, an eating schedule. You know, some people like breakfast. Others like lunch or brunch. Others like dinner. So you make time to eat. Nobody's ever too busy all the time that they forget to eat. Whether you grab a snack, you're eating. You're always finding something to eat. You need to do the same thing too when it comes to prayer. Prayer needs to be that much of a priority for you. That as you are going about your day, you set time. Maybe you have lunch. Before you take your lunch or during your lunch, you can dedicate some time to pray. You can take out a few minutes to pray. So those are things that you want to make sure you understand because once you have that daily routine of prayer, man, you're going to hear things from God that is going to blow your mind. You're going to, God is going to begin to drop little nuggets to you throughout the day. So you want to make sure 
Psalm 55 verse 17 says this. Evening and morning and at noon will I pray and cry aloud and he shall hear my voice. So what that is saying is in the evening, if you're a night person, that is when you have the energy. Listen, don't wait until you're so worn out and tired in order for you to pray. Don't wait until you're so worn out because here's what's going to happen. If you do not prioritize praying, you're going to get so worn out that the moment that you go to pray, you're sleeping. So instead of praying for 15 minutes, you're sleeping for 15 minutes. That's not prayer. You just took a nap. In the afternoon, maybe you got a little time in the afternoon that you can take a few minutes to pray. Or even in the morning. Key number two. You want to pray with faith. If you want to have a, a, a deeper walk, a deeper prayer life a strong prayer life you need to pray with faith approach God with unwavering belief that he hears and will answer you according to his will now I've already done a series about seven answered prayers and seven reasons why God doesn't answer our prayers. So I want you to go back to that message and listen to both of them again. In those messages, I talk about seven reasons why God ignores us and seven reasons why God answers our prayers, right? So you want to go back and listen to those. Prayer without faith is merely just words. So when you go to God in prayer and you just begin to say things, but you don't have any faith. You don't think it could ever happen. There are a lot of people that, that are like that. They will go to God in prayer. But they don't believe and they don't believe and they don't believe or have faith that what they are asking God for he is going to do. In that case, you are just merely just saying words. You are just speaking words. We got to trust that the all-knowing, the all-powerful, the all amazing God is able to act on our request according to his perfect wisdom. See, God understands everything that was going on. He understands what we need to do. It's not like push it, please. He understands everything that we need to do. So as we go to him in faith, we got to believe. We got to believe. We have to believe that God has already done it. I know people that have been praying about the same things for years. But they don't believe that is going to happen. They just say, well, let's see how it goes. If God listens to it, if it works out, great. If not, oh, well. You cannot have that same mindset when you go to God in prayer. You got to believe. You got to have faith. James 1 6 put it best. But let him or her ask in faith, not wavering. What does it mean to waver? To waver means that you're hoping, you're not really sure if it works, great if it doesn't work. To waver means you're go like a roller coaster. And there's so many people that have a roller coaster faith, which is a dad faith. A roller coaster faith is a dead faith. It's not faith at all. Because you cannot go to a God and pray for something and then you believe, you don't believe, you believe, and then you don't believe. Let me explain. The Bible said that we go from faith to faith. Right? So that means in between, you're going to have some challenges as you go from different levels of faith. You're going to have some things that you struggle with. But you got to be persistent and you have to keep speaking that I believe. Lord, help my unbelief. Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. I believe. Faith comes by hearing. And the reason why so many people are not accomplishing what they design prayer, because they're not feeding their minds with the right thing. They're not listening to the right messages. They're not around the right people. 
So anytime that you begin to pollute your minds with all the things that's wrong in this world, all the negative things, that is what you're going to fall prey to. The spirit that you submit to will always be the dominant one. So if you submit to the word of God and you submit to what God is telling and you have faith and you listen to messages, one of the best ways to build your faith up is to find a good word. Listen to some good words because that is going to increase your faith level, right? It is going to empower you. So a lot of times people faith keep going down. It keeps wavering because they're not feeding their minds. They always have all the things that's going wrong. They invest so much time and they put so much energy about what God has never done, what God can do. They focus on all the negative things. And I want you to listen to some testimonies. When you listen to testimonies from other people that are going through what you're going through, when you listen to testimonies, then that is going to inspire you to continue to seek the Lord. It is going to inspire you to believe that God really can do the impossible. But if all that you're listening and all that you're doing is watching all negative things, then you will not be able to know what God is doing. You got to regularly examine your heart, confess your sins, and repent to maintain a close walk with God. The next key. that I want to go over is examining your heart. Key number three is to practice confession and repentance. You cannot get deeper in God if you're constantly living in sin. You've made that choice that you're going to do whatever you want to do. You cannot have a deep prayer life when you're always living in sin. Because it is going to cloud your prayer life. It is going to bring so much hindrance. And when you do mess up, however that thing is you're struggling with, make it a habit that you go to God and say, okay, Lord, I fell short in this area. I didn't accomplish this in this area. So, Lord, I need you. You confess your sins to the Lord and you repent. You got to check your heart regularly because prayer has a lot to do with the state of your heart. There is no way for you to have an effective prayer life if you're, if you're bitter. There is absolutely no way that anyone can have an effective prayer life when they are bitter. Because bitterness is going to pollute your heart. It is going to corrupt you that you're going to be praying not from a place of love. The Bible said that God is love. So you're not going to be praying from a place of love, but you're going to be praying from a place of pure bitterness. You're going to be praying from a place of just pure hate. You're not going to be praying out of love. Unconfessed sin hinders our prayers. You can read Psalms 66 verse 18. So we must continually purify our hearts and read align our will with God through confession one of the ways that you stay in the will of God is you confess on a regular basis on a daily basis all of us have fallen short everyone for shorts every day but you don't have to stay that way first John 1 and 9 says this that if we confess our sins he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Regardless of what was happened, whatever you've done, you can have the assurance from the word of God to know that if you can go back to God in prayer and say, Lord, I'm coming to you about this issue. I'm coming to you about this particular thing that I did or didn't do. The Holy Spirit is going to bring conviction in your heart. 
And whenever he does, when the Holy Spirit heavily convicts you about something, you can do one or two things. And here's how this typically goes. When you're convicted about something you've done that is not right, whatever that thing is, you will notice that if you yield to that conviction and you repent, you're going to have an ease in your spirit. But if you decide that you don't want to listen to that or yield to the, the corrections or the convictions of the Holy Spirit, the first time that you do something that's wrong, you're going to feel so heavily convicted. But if you ignore it and go back to that thing again, you're going to suppress that conviction. So the next time you do something, yes, you're going to get convicted, but it's not going to feel as hard or as intense as the first time. And by the time that you do that thing five or six times, seven times, it becomes a routine that is so much in your spirit, in your soul, that you no longer get convicted about it. And that is why you can see people today that are deterred with things. They've interviewed murderers before that are locked up for life. And they talk about the experience that the first time that they killed someone, they felt so bad. But they never yielded to stop they moved on again then the next time see one thing you got to understand this the holy spirit is always gentle with you he's going to press you about a particular issue but if you choose to use your will to say i don't want to yield to that he's going to back off so you have a lot of people today that are that have already dug their own graves because they have been ignoring the convictions for, from the Holy Spirit to repent. They've been digging their own grave every time that you have an unconfessed sin that you just let it build up. You let it build up. You're digging your own grave and eventually, sooner than later, it is going to catch up to you. There are people whose lives have been completely destroyed because they ignored God was telling them, don't do this. God was telling them, listen, pay attention to this, this particular area, focus on this. God was telling them that, but they kept ignoring it. They kept ignoring it and they end up getting in serious trouble. Number four, pray scripturally. You need to understand how to pray scripturally. The Bible said that the angels of the Lord, they hearken unto his voice. They listen to his voice. I see a lot of people say things like command your angel. You don't have that authority yet to command your angel. You can't tell angels what to do. It doesn't work that way. If you use the word of God, they will listen to that. If you reframe something with the word of God, that's what they listen to. Because by their design, they are designed to make sure that any time that you utter the word of God, they begin to move, they activate. So one of the ways that you can activate angelic activities in your life is to pray the scriptures. Well, how do you pray the scriptures? If you have a particular issue in your life, you find a Bible verse, and I can almost guarantee there's a Bible verse for everything that you're struggling with in life. There is a Bible verse for every issue that you're facing. All that you need to do is just to pick one and you begin to speak that. And you begin to speak that. Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. So if you're feeling weak, you say, you know what? I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. I can overcome this challenge. Maybe you're going through some significant challenges. Maybe you're dealing with some form of addiction that you feel like you can't overcome this. That the enemy has lied to you that you're going to suffer with this thing. Maybe you have a particular sickness in your body. Or a sickness that runs rampant in your family. You can begin to say, you know what? I can overcome this thing. I can overcome. Philippians 4.19, that says, and my God shall supply all of my needs according 
to his riches in Christ Jesus. When you're going through financial hardships, you begin to declare that word in addition to working, investing, and using wisdom. See, the word only works when you know how to work the word. The word only works when you understand what you're saying. You got to pray scripturally. And in addition to praying scripturally, you got to use wisdom. Because you cannot pray for God to bless you. And yet you don't manage what God has given you. God will never bless you above or beyond your ability for what you're able to manage. And that's where you have a lot of people in the body today. They pray, Lord God, if I just had a million dollars, man, I can do this and I can do that. God was started by giving you one dollar to see how you deal and you manage that one dollar. And there are people that when they get the dollar, they waste it. Now, if you get a dollar and you invest it wisely, God is OK. Let me open a door for ten dollars and then a hundred dollars. And as you're able to manage that. God always give more because there are people that let's be honest. If God were to give you the million dollars that you're praying for and you desire, it is going to wreck your life. There are people that once they get that money, can nobody say nothing else to them. They want to do whatever they want, even though it's something that's bad and something they just want to do whatever that they want. So you got to pray the word. You know, the Bible provides a firm foundation for our prayers. It helps us to align our, our desires and our requests with God's will and God's character. John 15, 7 says this. If you abide in me and my words abide in you. You shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. What the Lord is saying is if you abide in me and my words, Joshua, it said that let this book of the law, let it not depart from you. You need to meditate. Thy word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. The word of God needs to be embedded in your heart. It needs to be second nature to you. It needs to transform your mind completely. So what the Lord is saying is, if my words abide in you. In other words, God's word needs to be a part of your daily speech. There's some of you that you need to change your vocabulary. You need to get the word of God to be part of your daily vocabulary. Well, you cannot get the word of God to be part of your daily vocabulary when you don't even spend time in the word of God because you are going to face different challenges. You're going to face opportunities are going to come your way that if you don't know how to use the word of God to seize those opportunities or to make a decision, then you're going to always make the wrong decision and you're going to regret it one way or another. So God is saying, let my word soak you. Let my word just be so embedded in you that it becomes part of your speech. Listen, I don't care what you go through in this life. When the word of God is embedded in your soul, when you face difficult challenges, your first reaction is not going to be to complain. Your first reaction is what does the word of God say about this issue that I'm dealing with? And that is why you got to spend time in that word. So many people today when they're facing hard time and we see the world, a lot of crazy things are happening in our world. When people go on through challenging times, all they do is complain because that's all they've put in their heart is to complain. All they do is to make excuses because that's what they've deposited. That's what's embedded in them is to complain. But I challenge you that today will be a new day that you are going to allow the word of God to wash every negative thought. 
that you are going to allow the word of God to recalibrate your mindset that the next time that you have to make a decision the next time that you need to do something you're not sure the next time that the enemy comes in with different obstacles and challenges you're going to speak the word when Jesus was tempted by the devil he spoke nothing but the word your breakthrough is in the word your next level is in the word so you need to cultivate an attitude of speaking God's word ground your prayers in true in the truth and promises of God there are so many promises in the word of God that you need to take advantage of you got to take advantage of and we we'll learn from Second Chronicles the prayer of Jabez when Jabez recognized that his words can change his destiny, Jabez said, oh, Lord, God, bless me indeed and enlarge my borders, enlarge my territories. There are some of you that you are just one word away from your breakthrough. Just one word can transform your life. But don't get so caught up in the negativity. All you need is just one word and God will forever change your life. Number five, practice perseverance in prayer. Don't give up when things and the answers that you're hoping for seems delayed. Continue praying fervently. When you pray fervently, you are pushing. You are pushing. You are persisting perseverance is what a lot of people lack today people sometimes start praying for something they don't get the results they're looking for they just give up I'm done I'm finished you got to be persistent and you got to persevere and as I mentioned before when you wait until things are so bad that you need to have an emergency prayer with God it is going to require you more persistent in prayer because so much has already happened the enemy has already caused so much havoc the enemy has already caused so much disruption that now you need to fight back and you need to push back it's like in in a war when you have two sides that are fighting one side if they're not prepared they're going to give push back they're going to get pushed back but if they can just stay persistent and not give up eventually they're going to overcome the enemy and that is the same thing with you you got to be persistent about what you're praying and believing god for because you're going to face times when the answers might get delayed. We say this through our scripture. But you got to keep praying. As they say push. Pray until something happens. You got to stay in your prayer closet. You don't get the answers that you desire. You keep praying. And keep pushing through. And you got to understand something too about persistency. It all has to do with timing. God's timing is not our timing. So as you are praying and you've been persistent, there are times when you can be persistent about something for a week, a month, a year, and it's something like nothing has happened because God has a reason why the timing is off. Perseverance through prayer demonstrates our earnest and trust in God's perfect plan. When you are persevering in prayer, you're saying to God, I don't see the full picture. I don't need to. 
I know that based on Jeremiah 29 11 that you have a plan for me I am going to believe that word and I am going to stand on that word and I am going to speak that word and I am going to wait for that word to manifest but as I wait for the word to manifest, I am going to war with that word. What does it mean to war with the word? It means you keep praying about it. You keep believing that God is going to do it. Now, there's some things you deal with that you pray once and it seems like it's fixed. And there are other things that you can pray about. You got to keep praying. It requires more intensity to break through from those. Luke 18, 1 says this, and he spoke a parable unto them to this end, that men always, always are to pray and not to faint. Because Jesus know that there is going to be times that you faint. There's going to be time that you, you give up. There's going to be time that you say, you know what, I can't do this anymore. But you got to keep pushing. Key number six, praying with the right motives. Check your heart's motives and desire to make sure, listen, to make sure that your prayers are aligned with God's will. As I mentioned before, if you have bitterness in your heart, your prayers will never be aligned with the will of God for your life. Your prayers are going to be aligned with your desires and what the devil has for you. We can pray with wrong motives rooted in selfishness or worldly desires. Our motives must be purified to seek God's kingdom first. Listen, it's all about the kingdom of God. It's all about the kingdom of God. James 4, 3 says this, ye ask and receive not because ye ask amiss that you may be consumed it upon your lust. You're asking for your selfish reasons. If what you're asking God for, what you're praying for is only going to benefit you, forget about that prayer being answered. See, when you put the agenda of God first, when you put other people's needs first, that is the fastest way to get God's attention. So instead of spending all the time just praying for you, I need you to change and begin to pray for other people. I want you to bring the needs of others. During my personal prayer time, I'm not spending the whole time praying for me. I bring other people's needs. I bring my family. I bring my kids. I bring things that are important to me. And I bring those up to God and I make it a part of my prayer. That 85% of my prayer is about the kingdom of God. 85% to 90 is about the kingdom of God praying for other people, praying for my kids. That's a priority for me to make sure that I'm lifting them up every day. When you do that, you're going to watch God transform your lives. You're going to see God begin to do things for you that you did not even pray about. If you can just pray and prioritize other people's needs above your own. If you can just begin to intercede for someone that you know is going through something. If you can bring their needs before God and say, God, I'm praying for this person. Lord, I am fasting for this person. God, intercede for them. God will begin to answer your prayers faster than you could ever imagine. God don't like selfish prayer requests. It's all about me, me, Lord. What about me? What about this, God? I, 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 I. You need to get that word out of your mind. I, I, or me, me, me. Number seven, combine prayer with obedience. Obedience to God's command must accompany our prayers. If you want to get to another level in your prayer life with the Lord, obedience is a requirement. Obedience, obedience is a prerequisite to getting a deeper relationship with the Lord. You got to be obedient 
Because it makes no sense for you to pray to God about something and then you ignore everything God tells you to do. And we have a lot of people today that they're going to pray about something and they go to God and God will speak to their heart, but they completely disobey everything that God is telling them to do. You nullify your own prayers where you're not obedient to God. Because part of talking to God is for, for, for God to tell you what to do, where to go. Prayer is meant to align our will with God's, not to change his will to suit our needs. See, a lot of people go to prayer and expect for God to change his mind. You know what? I'm going to change God's mind about this. I want to get this thing. I want to do this thing. So I'm going to change God's mind about it. It doesn't work that way. And now there's something called the permissive will of God. The permissive will of God is when God gives you a leeway. God gives you permission based on the things you're asking for. Now, again, this is not something that always happened. And we see a prime example of this with King Hezekiah Walker, Hezekiah, not Hezekiah Walker, but Hezekiah in the Bible. Where God sent the prophet Isaiah to let him know, pack your bags Get your house in order. You're surely going to die. But Hezekiah went back to the Lord and cried out. So God in his permissive will permitted and gave Hezekiah 15 more years. Now you got to understand something about God's permissive will. There is a reason why it's permissive. There is a reason why it's permissive. One of the things that you're going to realize about God's permissive will is this. If it's not in God's original plan and it's, it's in God's permissive plan, you have to be willing to deal with the consequences that come. Because anytime that anything is in the permissive will of God, you are going to face challenges later on. Because God is saying, okay, you want this thing so badly? It's nothing wrong. It's not the best that I have for you. It's not what I had in mind for you. But I'm going to allow it. When I do allow it, whatever goes wrong, don't come back and blame me. Because that was not in my original plan for you. But since you want this thing so badly, not everything that God does that with, just some things. So my prayer for you is that you're going to align yourself with the good and perfect and the divine will of God for your life. God's original plan for you. So I need you to you need to have a prayer saying, Lord, take me back to your original plan for my life. Because a lot of us has gotten in so much trouble that would press God about a specific issue onto God's permissive will allow that thing to happen. And now you're regretting it. And now you're fighting on necessary battle because God had told you from the beginning, this is not what I would desire for you. This is not in my original plan. But since you've been pressing me so much about it, I'm going to let you have it. But you got to deal with the consequences that come from the things that you ask for that I permitted. When I realized that, when I had that revelation, it changed my prayer life. I began to say, Lord, whatever you desire originally from me when you created me, that's what I want. Because, yes, you're going to face challenges even with God's original plans for you. But the strength that you're going to get, the fulfillment that you're going to get will be there. So you have a lot of people today find themselves in situations that they regret because they pressed the hand of God about a particular issue and God permitted it. And now the consequences, the negative consequences that came from that, they're struggling. They're struggling. We must obey what he has already revealed. 
when God reveals something to you and you know it's the Lord, you must obey, not argue. First John 3.22 says this, and whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. One of the things about the Lord is that he's going to let you get, get away with certain things. Why? We just don't know. There's some things that are, that are a mystery to man that we will never know. Not even when we get to heaven. Some things will forever stay a mystery. Why God allows certain things? Why God did things the way that he did? It's going to be a mystery that will never be solved by us. And we got to be okay with it. So as we wrap up today, I want to just go back and recap what we covered. And first, I said one of the keys is that you need to establish a prayer time and a prayer place. Set aside a dedicated time each day. Whether it's the first thing you do in the morning. I would encourage you that the first thing you do in the morning is to start your day with prayer. Not checking your phone to see who messaged you. Not checking to see what alerts that you have. Don't do that. Start your day with prayer. So if you wake up at 5 in the morning, after you brush your teeth, wash your face, before you do anything else, just take a few moments. Find a quiet, distraction-free place where you can pray undisturbed. You can't pray when people are always disturbing you. You can't pray when somebody's always calling you. Oh, no, find a place, even if it's just for a few moments. Begin, your, your, begin with praise and worship. So before you even start to pray and bring all your requests to the Lord, God, give me this. God, do this. Always begin with praise and worship. Father, I thank you for today. Lord, I thank you that I am alive another day. Oh, Jesus, you are so amazing. I thank you that I can breathe. I thank you that I can see. I thank you that I am alive. Start with praise and you get into worship. Oh, Father, you are so amazing. Lord God, I worship you. Father, you are magnificent. And you begin to praise and you begin to worship. When you start your, your prayer time by praising God's character, attributes, and works, you're going to see amazing things happen. Use scripture or songs to guide your praise. So sometimes you got to put in a song that will lift you up. There are times that even before I begin to pray, I can listen to some worship songs for one, two, or three hours just to saturate myself in the atmosphere. And once I get saturated in the presence of the Lord, then I begin to pray. This is going to make sure that your heart is right before making any request. When you can saturate yourself in the presence of the Lord before you start to pray through music, through songs, through worship, the posture of your heart is going to be right when you begin to pray. And it talked about pray scripturally. Let the Bible guide your prayers by praying verses back to God. The Lord says, bring back my word to my remembrance. In other words, bring those things that I promised you. Bring them not because they forgot. Because God is a God of communication. He's a God of communion. He wants you to bring those things back to him. And you got to claim the promises that God has over your specific situation. When you pray scripturally, you're claiming those things that God has already decreed over you. Use prayers from the Bible. Use the Lord's prayer as a model to show you how to pray. So when you go to God, you know he's our father, which thou art in heaven, our father in heaven. Our Father in heaven, he's in a different realm than you. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. So you understand that you are desiring things for the kingdom of God. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. God's will is already done for you in heaven. You need to just translate that on earth. Number four, confess sins and ask for forgiveness. Regularly examine your heart and confess any sins to God. Ask for his forgiveness and strive to forgive others. This is going to remove barriers to an intimate relationship with God. 
You don't want any barriers with your walk with the Lord. You want to make sure that all those things are removed to build that intimacy. And then pray and persevere in prayer. Don't give up if answers seem delayed. Keep praying fervently. If you continue enough with enough force, with enough persistence and consistency, you're going to get the breakthrough that you need. Set reminders to pray throughout the day, not just at your dedicated time. So listen, every few minutes, if you got to set reminders on your phone, I used to do this before. But it's become such a habit now that I'm, I don't have to anymore. I set time, you know, pray at this time, one o'clock pray, three o'clock pray, just different times to pray. And when you do that consistently, that becomes a part of you. So you no longer set reminders now, but second nature, you spend time praying throughout the day. It don't have to be a long prayer. It can just be something like, oh, Father, I thank you for this. Lord, thank you for my car. Thank you for my mind. Thank you for my kids. Thank you for food. Just little things. Make that a habit to thank God every opportunity you get. And also you want to enlist a prayer partner to pray in agreement with you. Whatever you believe in God for, get a prayer partner so you can pray together with them. Someone that can believe that God can do things. A prayer partner can be someone that can see things sometimes that you don't see. They can give you a different perspective that you've never had before. A prayer partner is someone that can help you to push through certain things. You want to seek God's will above your own. Surrender your plans to his greater purpose. Your prayer should be, your will be done. Your will be done. Just like Jesus did, not my will. Because our will is going to lead us into destruction. Our wills is going to lead us into corruption and pain. But if you can just surrender to his. And you got to practice listening prayer. What is a listening prayer? Listening prayer is when you just go to listen to what God has already said. Or you go to listen to get instructions about something. One of the things that a lot of people do is that they just pray and pray and pray. But they never take the time to just Sit before God and say, Lord, what are you saying about this thing? And just listen. Be open to how he may choose to answer or guide you. So when you pray, you don't know how God is going to guide you. You don't know what he's going to tell you to do. But people make this mistake because they go to God in prayer and they already have in their minds what they, how they wanted to go, when they wanted to go, who they wanted to be with. They have all that mapped out. God doesn't work that way. And finally, I want you to write down and uh, write down what God is telling you. Create a prayer journal. Okay? Create a prayer journal. When you pray, write down what you think God is saying. Just jot things down. And I can promise you, you come back to that weeks later. Months later, sometimes years later, and you're going to realize that the things that you've been praying for, God is taking you a different direction. God has given you more clarity. God has done this, but you need to have a prayer journal that you're keeping consistently. I pray that you're going to take these to heart. And deepen your prayer life with the Lord. Because God desires to communicate with you on a daily basis. Don't let prayer be the hell Mary you throw just to get out of things. I know a lot of people today, the only time that they'll call me is when they get in trouble. When things are not going right. That's when you get calls, you get texts, you get emails. And that's what we do to God. We wait until situations has gone so bad that we begin to pray then. But at that point, sometimes it's too late. Other times you got to persevere and push more to get the breakthrough that you need. 
I want to pray for you that God is going to stir up a desire in your heart to pray like never before. Father, I just come to you, Lord. I pray that you're going to stir up a desire. I want you to use your words and say, Father, stir up a desire in me to pray. Lord, stir up a desire in me to pray. Not just when I feel like praying. Father, let there be a stirring in the hearts of your people to seek your face. Father, let there be a stirring in the heart to spend time with you. And I pray for those that have never heard or have never been given their lives to the Lord Jesus. If you're tired of not going the right direction, if you're ready to live your purpose that God created you for, only the Lord Jesus can show you that way. I want to pray for you right now. A simple prayer to just turn your life over to the Lord. Give everything over to him. Just repeat this after me. Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner in need of a savior. I come to you today because I believe that you are the son of God. I give my heart over to you. I give my life over to you. Forgive my sins. Wash and cleanse me. From today forth, I will serve you for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm so glad that you've turned your life over to the Lord. And just remember this uh, Wednesday, um, our Zoom Bible studies are going to be at 9 o'clock. So there's going to be a link for you to sign up and get connected. I'm going to be going a lot deeper with the different things that I'm going to be teaching because I know Sundays are just to kind of whet your appetite. But then on Wednesdays, that's when we go into a little bit much more longer prayer. So enjoy the rest of your day. God bless you and see you next week. Matter of fact, see you Wednesday.